Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Darkfoot with Second Life and I'm going to show you kind of how to make a sign. Everybody likes to make signs and I'm going to show you how to make a 3D sign and be able to import it into Second Life. Uh, this is something I'm just messing around with. I got a lot of projects that I've been working on and kind of just burnt out at the moment and don't feel like messing with anything else that I've got going here. So, um, you know, I've got semis and different things going on. But I just wanted to show you how to do a 3D text in Blender. And you guys, you can actually see it actually has depth to it. So I want to show you kind of how to do this. Uh, here, what I have is a fire texture on here. Actually, you can go wherever you want. This one is actually Deviant Art, And this particular texture is called Fire by Shades of Gray. Um, there are a lot of websites out there that you can get uh, free textures from. Um, some you have to pay for. I just tend to go here mostly by default and click download after I find the one and download it to my computer. So let me show you real quickly how to do this. We'll go to new and reload the startup file. We're going to hit X to delete that default cube and hit 7 on the numcat, numpad key. So I'm in the top orthographic. Now if yours says perspective like this, just hit the number 5 key on your numpad and you're in orthographic. The difference between the two of these is in perspective exactly what it says. The further away something is, the smaller it looks. And the closer it is to the camera, the bigger it looks. Ortho is almost like a 2D. It kind of just it remains the same. Doesn't matter how far away it is, it's still going to look the same. And most building for uh, in Blender done for um, Second Life and a lot of other places um, are done in top or or in ortho. You can change your camera view around, but it's always done in ortho. Uh, I tend to use hotkeys. Um, and I'll talk about them briefly but first thing I want to do you can either come down here to add and left click and go to text I use, I'm going to say shift and A and then I'm going to come down to text so there's where our text is going to be it's always going to start in the corner of your X right here your red is X and your Y which is green but you'll notice it has no depth which is blue your Zeta or Z, whatever you want to call it, it has no depth to it. It's just a two-dimensional uh, text. So again, yeah, you can come to object mode and hit edit, or I can use my hotkeys for backspace or delete it. Okay, scrolling back out with my mouse wheel. You can make this say whatever you want. Doc loves Olivia, or I love you, or uh, Club uh, Walla Walla Boom Bam, or whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just going to do one called signs okay now if you wanted to continue this out you could hit spacebar and continue typing or hit the enter key uh, not the one on your numpad but the one next to, you, to your letters your main typing area if you hit the enter key you can continue typing and hit enter again continue typing and let's say you wanted to kind of drag this around so everything's kind of centered one of the ways you can do is use your your back arrow keys and hit the space bar up space bar like that you know and just kind of move it around how you want I'm going to hit control Z control Z just get rid of all of these here real quick alright so now we have our basic sign in text form there's nothing else yet and I'm going to hit alt C as in Charlie whoops I'm sorry first I got to tab out which I use the hotkeys or just come down here to edit mode now if you hit alt charlie we're going to select the second one mesh from curve meta surf or text okay you've now converted that sign those letters into mesh unfortunately though it still does not have any depth to it there's no depth to it whatsoever so you're still looking at 2d okay so I'm going to hit the number 1 on my numpad key. I'm going to come back into edit mode. Wait, i got to hit top first. Uh, press and hold my shift key while uh, moving my mouse button or I'm dragging it around. I'm going to hit uh, box select or B. And I'm just going to select everything that's on the top. 
So we're just grabbing all the top vertices. Now you'll notice that there's some dark areas in there. That means like here, 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 or here. Those were not selected when you did the box. So I'm going to hit the C or Charlie key and you can scroll out to make it bigger, scroll in to make it smaller. I'm just going to left click on each of those black areas to grab those vertices. And then when you're done, just right click. So left click to select, right click to finish. Okay, so now I have all my verts selected. Now I'm going to hit the number one key to go to my front view. And I'm going to hit E as an Edward and Z to constrain it to the Z value here. You don't have to. If you hit the Z key again, you can kind of angle it or whatever you want. But I want to constrain it to the Z value, either up or down. In this case, I want to go up. And I don't need it very big, say right there, left click to set it. Now I have mine set up in uh, metric and each one of these squares is uh, 0.5 uh, meters. So it kind of just gives you an idea. Now we'll come back to the 7 key and we're back on the top. Okay, now what you got to do is you got to assign a material to it. You now have 3D. But there's nothing there. I mean, you don't have any material. I'm going to hit sign, uh, 7. I'm going to hit this and go back to object mode just to make it simple. I'm going to come over here and grab this brown uh, uh, ball thing. Not the blue one. That's your world. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab this brown one. This is your materials. Click new. And you've now assigned because you have it highlighted. Um, if it's not in orange, hit the A key but it should be automatically assigned to it, okay? Um, you can come click right here. If you use hex values, like you got a certain color and you want to enter the number, you can do so right here. Uh, or you can just kind of select a color that you want it to be. If you just want to do just the color by itself, you can kind of just select what you want, take your mouse away, and it accepts that color. Intensity is from 0, 0.0 to 0. Uh, to 1.0 so you can change this by left click and type in 1.0 if you want kind of make it a little more sharper uh, sharper or a 0, 0.0 to kind of make it all black so it's how intense do you want that color do you want it full full hard or do you want it kind of you know edit it and kind of soften it up or whatever I'm going to put it back to 0.8 turn it back to there I'm going to click back right here and I'm going to put it back to kind of 0 uh, the other one is your specular, which gives it your shininess. If you want to add in a secondary color, you can click there and do it. And you can, again, change the intensity. Hardness, we're going to leave it right at 50. Uh, let me pull this out by left click and holding. Now, this material, you can actually name this. So, by left clicking in there, hit the backspace key. And I'm just going to name this one Base Material. So that if you're having to use uh, multiple colors, you can actually add a new one right here. Click on there and say base material. You can uh, rename it to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, negative value. I'm just giving it a name, whatever. And you come here, you should have, you know, you have your where you're listed. And you can select and change between the different materials that you're looking for. Uh, if I was to come here, whoops, wrong one. Um, base, let's go to negative value. Let's come here. I'm just going to drag this slider down, make it black, and just kind of look around. Come back to here. You see how you got your different colors, um, and you can just keep doing that. However many you need for whatever you want to do. Um, I can also right now just come here and I'll click the X to delete it, and then all I have is uh, the white, the plain white. Now that you have assigned a color to it, uh, now we can go to your texture. You cannot apply the texture until you have a base material. So we're going to click on this checkerboard pattern. Again, we're going to select new. We'll come down to open. Um, drive D. And we're going to come down to pictures. And you can also do uh, like large uh, thumbnails, small thumbnails, or text right here. I'm just going to come over to my S. Uh, fire, fire, fire. 
Where is that at? Uh, fire by shades of gray. That's what I'm looking for, and I'm going to open image. So there is my fire texture. Now you don't have to use this one. You can use whatever texture that you wish to. But just for this here, I'm going to show you. Just using this. So at this point, this texture is still not applied to here. Why? Because we have to unmap it, unwrap it. So I'm going to grab that corner and slide it over. I'm going to hit the T as in Thomas to get rid of that. And uh, whatever side your mouse is on is the side that whatever you do is going to take effect. I'm going to come down here, click here, come to UV Image Editor, and now what I have is a blank screen. Coming over to this side, I need to go back to Edit Mode, and then I'm going to hit the U. Now, you can unwrap right there, but to unwrap it, you have to come through and cut it, kind of like cutting open a cardboard box. You can do a smart UV project where it kind of does it all by itself, but you tend to come up with stuff overlapping and all messed up, etc., etc., and it can, it can get a little confusing for newbies so I want to hit Control Z to undo that hit the U button again this particular one I'm going to do a project from view so basically I'm looking straight down on it and so I want to do project from view there you go now you see that it's all here okay now what I need to do since I've already assigned uh, a texture Instead of going to open or new, I want to come to this little picture thing here, and I want to left click on there. There it is, signs. Now you can hit the G, and you can kind of grab it and drag it around and move it around. Hit the escape key. If you want to, let me switch, go right over here, and we're going to go to a texture. Now this way I can see what's going on with it while I'm moving it around. Um, let's drag this over a little bit. So now again, grab. And you can see how it's moving over there. Now, even if you go off screen, it's still going to be reading the image. Um, while I have it, I'm going to hit Escape. You can hit S for Scale and scale it however you want to scale it if you want to. You could rotate it if you wanted to. Um, you could even grab individual uh, individual and say hit A. Let's say I put my uh, to deselect, cut, put my cursor over to S, hit L as in Larry, G to grab, and I can constrain that to the Y value if I want to, which is up and down, escape or X. Whoops, I'll grab and X to slide it, you know, from side to side. I could even uh, uh, scale this particular one if you want to make it bigger, uh, rotate it around if you wanted to, hit escape whatever you wanted to do and you could do these with each one of these hit the L key grab and move it and just kind of reposition how you want now you'll notice that as I was moving that G you'll see the texture over here is uh, moving as well see that hit the escape key A A to deselect and reselect and kind of just scale it up a little bit here just the further away you get the more um, Define it is up in here. The closer you get by hitting Control Z, put it back and scale again. But we want to make it smaller, and then say grab it. You'll notice that it changes over here. The texture will actually get bigger and bigger by going smaller and smaller. It's kind of the opposite effect. So if I was to scale this again and kind of go way, way out there, kind of like this, you can see how it's really just, you know, just really messing it up so control Z put it back where it is once you have that done I'm gonna put my cursor over the middle uh, join area I'll right click on that right click on that uh, line left click on join area it's gonna show a window you can go either way I just go this way now if I hit the zero key on my numpad and I'm gonna tap the in as a Nancy I want to lock the camera to view now I can actually scroll around and, and it'll keep that your your whatever you're locked onto in the screen. Turn it back off and now you see um, it's not wanting to work right. Um, see there it is, but the moment you try to move it's going to undo. So let's turn the end back off. Uh, I'm going to come back to object mode. Let's go back to 7. Top. Deselect, I'm going to 
uh, just right click on there just to select that and basically that is basically about all you have to do is now got your depth that you need on uh, the light sources on the top so what you want to do is export it so you come over here file you could save it if you wanted to or save as uh, if you do a save it's going to save it as a blend file dot b l e n d and that can only be opened by using blender uh, you cannot export uh, to second life using that you have to come down to export come on give me export and we're going to go over to colada click there and we'll just click one time in here hit the backspace key and we'll say signs and uh, put in parentheses fire and hit enter to accept that and click on export then all you have to do is load it into second life um, you will have to come back to your folders to upload the texture and apply it once you've got it loaded in the second life <clears throat> that's basically it I mean it's really easy to do it's not hard it's just it's super super easy to do and everybody likes to make signs until next time, enjoy!